Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and um, in today's video I just wanted to uh, cover a topic about uh, beginning an indoor cycling training program uh, for beginners and I got this idea here from a subscriber. I had a guy, uh, a gentleman commented on one of my videos here recently and was asking me if I could come up with uh, some kind of tips or ideas on, you know, um, indoor cycling uh a program based on uh, from a from, from a beginner's perspective and you know what I thought that's a good idea and it's something I'll try to do a little more of in the future is uh, maybe you know talk to you guys about uh, some tips I would recommend for you know uh, cycling if you're just starting out rather be actually outdoors on the road or indoor indoor training um, now what I want to do in this video is I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna basically give you guys a couple of tips on how I would, if I was going to be starting out today, um, having the knowledge I have now, okay, after, you know, three, four years of writing, um, basically using that knowledge, if I could go back in time and start over and have to start over with my training, how I would go about doing that um, to see the best performance and uh, to see the best performance in as little amount of time. Now, Basically, what I've been learning here, and, and mostly this, I've learned this the last year probably, is that uh, when it comes to performance-based cycling, okay, there's really one main metric, uh, one main concept that, you know, all performance is, is, is based around, really. And um, it's a concept called, you know, called watts per kilo, and a lot of people don't, a lot of guys don't understand that fully, so I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit more about that also, and I do have a older video here in the channel where I talked a little bit about watts per kilo training and how I would use that. I'm going to do a refresher video for any of the new subscribers who haven't seen that video and target this video based on if I was to, if I was just starting out in my cycling career, how I would approach that. So, Basically, what watts per kilo is, is everybody, every every rider, every endurance athlete, okay, has, um, every cyclist has what's uh, what's called uh, an FTP or functional threshold power. Basically, in layman's terms, what FTP is, is it is how much power you can throw out for about an hour worth of time if you were, you know, if you had a gun to your, if you had a gun held to your head okay, and your life depended on it, how much power could you throw out for an hour? That's what your FTP is in a, in a nutshell. We all have one. And deciphering what it is at any given time is, isn't easy because you, you really have to push yourself. You have to, you have to get good at, at knowing how to push your body to the limits. So establishing your FTP is not easy to do. And I'm I'm just now starting to get a little bit of a hang of it, okay, now that I'm doing the Trainer Road program. I've been doing Trainer Road now for, for uh, like, well, for basically like 10 or 11 weeks, I've been doing Trainer Road, and I tell you what, I'm seeing great results with it, and of course, it's a power-based training program, and now that I've been training with power for so long, um, I have a pretty, I think I have a pretty good handle on where my FTP is, and, but anyways, what it all boils down to is so you take your FTP and you basically just uh, just factor that into how much you weigh. So like for myself, currently I I would estimate my FTP is well I'm riding my trainer road workouts at 275 FTP now. So my FTP is at 275. I can pretty much maintain 275 watts of power for about an hour. Okay, and I weigh 125 pounds. So if you take 125 pounds, put that into 275 watts, you get just over 4.8 watts per kilo, roughly, okay, is, is what I can produce for power over an hour. So, and basically, if I was to be, if I was going to restart out my training today, start over from zero, from scratch, had no real formalized training, was just getting into the sport, just getting into cycling, the way I would approach my training today, if I was just starting out, is I would go off of watts per kilo um, numbers, but do it from a very, sh uh, from a very uh, be beginning uh, level. Basically, what I would recommend doing 
if you're just getting into if you're just getting into cycling, rather it's on the indoor trainer or on the road. Is I would simply I would I would go out on say a two hour ride, okay, and see if I can ride for two hours at two watts per kilo. Just you know factor up what you weigh, get that into kilos, and just simply times it by two. And hopefully you have a power meter. Again, this this video is going to be based on the fact that you have a power meter because I think from a from a performance cycling level, having a power meter is very critical. I mean, it, it just you want to know what you're doing. And in my opinion, you can't do that with heart rate. In fact, I don't even train with heart rate. I don't even know. I don't even train with heart rate at all. I used to. I was a little bit when I first started training road. I was doing a little bit of heart rate training, a lot of, you know, getting my heart rate data. You know what? I, I don't care what my heart rate data is. For me, it's all about power and all about watts per kilo. And so this video is based on the fact that you have a power meter, which is the single most important upgrade you can make to your bike is getting a power meter so you know what you're doing when you're on the bike. And that's how, that's how you track your progress. You know, hey, I did this last week. I'm doing this today. My goal is to do this next week. That's how you track progress is with a power meter. And it's really the only true way to track your progress is with a power meter. So you've got a power meter on your bike. You're just starting out. I would go out and try to see if I could ride for a couple of hours in average two watts per kilo. And if I can do that and I can do that without, you know, falling off my bike and, and just feeling completely wrecked, then, you know, the next week after a week of that kind of riding, if I was getting through the rides and, and, and felt like I could progress, the next week I would try to go out for a two-hour for two hour ride and I would try to hold 2.2 watts per kilo or 2.3 watts per kilo. Do some math before you go out and do the math. Figure out what target what uh, what power targets you have to kind of meet to, to accommodate that and then go out and try to knock out that ride. And then... Maybe do that for a few weeks, and then, you know what, I'm going to bump up. I'm going to try to ride at 2.5 watts per kilo. And you just slowly progress every week or two. Just slowly try to progress how many watts per kilo you're riding at. And uh, and just try to slowly increase. But I would, use, I would use a watts per kilo basis for my training. But I would do it from a very from a very beginning perspective. I wouldn't just go, you can't just go right out and say, I'm going to go out and ride it you know, 4.5 watts per kilo for two hours, you know, you, you it, it takes training to build that up. And I'm just now, and I've, I've been training pretty hard, uh, you know, for the last year, I've been training really hard. And uh, I'm just now, you know, getting to that, you know, to that 4.7, 4.8 range. And it's tough. It's, it's brutal, very hard. But I think if you just kind of start out from a very low manageable number, I think any cyclist, even a beginner, I think any cyclist or any, any athlete who's in even just normal shape, normal physical condition, can go out and can ride at 2 watts per kilo. Okay, so start there. Start at 2 watts per kilo. Start at 1.5 watts per kilo if you have to. But start at a low manageable number and just slowly work your way up every couple of weeks and before you know it, you're going to be riding at 4 watts per kilo, 4 plus watts per kilo, and you're going to be hammering out there on your group rides and in your, in your races. So that's how I would uh, target training now if I was just starting out. I would use a watts per kilo basis, and I would just start out very conservatively, and I would just slowly build up over time and uh, slowly progress. Now, keep in mind, you also would have to kind of factor in your recovery I'm not saying I would just go out and ride at 2.5 watts per kilo every single day or 2 watts per kilo every single day starting out. You know, you want to you want to give yourself, you know, a couple of rest days a week, at least one. I like to take one day completely off the bike, completely off doing anything, just focusing on recovery one day a week, do nothing but recover. And uh, I also of course do maybe, you know, one or two you know, not so intense days, but that's a whole different topic. But in general, if I was just starting out cycling, I would uh, be using a watts per kilo approach, start out very conservatively, and just slowly work my way up. And again, that's rather I was riding outdoors, or if I was riding on the indoor trainer, I would still use that same approach to my training. Um, I hope you guys found this video informative. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. And as always, I look forward to seeing you guys right back here in the next video.